Hello, this is Joe Pryor with the virtual real estate team.com in Oklahoma City. I've got Henri here who's going to help me in the video. Uh, and I want to do something that I've done a lot of uh, in videos and in blog posts, which is talk about short sales. And some of this, if you've read what I've been, been writing if you, about what I'm talking about, you may know some of this. But, you know, again, I want to go over some of the red flags that I'm seeing right now. Uh, now, I do the share of sale list every two weeks, and if you've seen a previous blog, I've talked about that 7 out of 10 homeowners don't seek any visual means of help in rescuing them from foreclosure, uh, and that's a fact. Uh, and it's here in Oklahoma, just like it is in some of the bubble states. But there's another problem, and that's the 3 out of 10 that do seek help. And what I want to talk about is some of the mistakes that I see that are out there that you need to be aware of if you're a distressed homeowner in Oklahoma City or anywhere for that matter. Now, again, what I do is I have two computers on my desk. I put up the sheriff sale list on one side and the Oklahoma City multiple listing service on the other. And what I do is I go through and say, are they listed or not? Uh, uh, did they try? Uh, and what I found this week, I, I, I want to talk to you about, number one, I saw one that was on the share of sale list for May 5th, and it was listed, uh, but it was not listed as a short sale. It was listed as a regular sale, and the price was pumped up. Uh, in fact, it was pumped up about $20,000 over about 40 listings that you could buy, and that's just not going to work. Now, you know what, I'm assuming that the realtor just said, well, you know, I don't know anything about short sales, but, you know, if we get this amount of money, we can pay everything off. The problem was, is when I looked at what they owed, I don't know if the realtor understood that there's at least $4,000 worth of fees just from the attorneys, uh, and that it has been at a minimum of about 10 months without making payments. And you take 10 months and you start taking interest uh, and late fees and things, and you've got problems. Uh, but that's no way to sell a house. And, and the problem is that person's going into foreclosure. It's too late at this point to switch, and obviously the realtor doesn't know how to do it. Uh, so if that's you, and somebody comes to you and say, well look, we'll start from the bottom up, that's not the way it works, folks. It's a competitive market everywhere right now. It's pretty much a buyer's market everywhere. And they're not going to buy your property, especially when you're in foreclosure, uh, when they can buy a non-foreclosure for less money. And that's, that's the first problem that I saw. Uh, then I saw another one that had expired on the listing that was going on May 5th on the sheriff sale. And what the realtor put into the remarks, and in the wrong place, which is a violation of our MLS, but anyway, she did have in there that she's going to send all the offers to the lender to make a decision. So all offers will be looked at. Well, that's a huge problem because that's not the way short sales are done. REOs can be done that way. Foreclosed properties that are owned by the bank uh, are decisions that typically are made by the bank and very often they have a date which all offers have to be in by this time. A short sale is owned by the homeowner until the confirmation of sheriff sale. In other words, about three weeks after the sheriff sale date is a cure date that they, they can have a redemption period to pay it off. And so you can only have one contract and besides that, lenders don't want to look at multiple contracts. They won't look at anything that you send them if you send them more than one signed contract, so maybe she was well-meaning, but she didn't know what she was doing. And this person is going into foreclosure. Now, those are just two obvious examples that I saw. Now, let me give you a couple of others if, if you are considering a realtor. And I want you to consider a realtor like us that does this full-time uh, and has a lot of background, a lot of training, and a lot of success. First of all, we don't take a listing until we have all your documentation. In other words, when we meet with you the first time, we give you the financial worksheet. We give you an example of a hardship letter and determine if you do have a hardship. Uh, we get all the documents in terms of where you have money, what your bills are, all these things that we have to send into the lender uh, ahead of time. So we want to know that you're really actively involved in this. And of course, we're going to need that. And we don't want to have to ask for it once we get the contract in there. So you've got to know that you've got to get this stuff up front, but you've got to know which pieces that a lender needs. Uh, and so if the realtor says, oh, let's go ahead and just list it and see what happens, that's not the way to go about this. Not only that, you should start title work immediately because you may not know that you have liens against your property. In other words, if you have a problem with 
uh, Discover Card or Visa, you may not know that they've attached your home. And we need to know these things ahead of time. Surprises are really, really bad, and we've got to inform the buyer and the buyer's realtor of everything that's going on. So that's extremely important. And then once you get the contract, and, and this is based on knowing how to price and how to do price reductions over a particular period of time, you got to know how to send the documents in. Not only that, there are some short sales that are approved up front. This can happen in VA, this can happen in FHA, it can also happen if you're involved in the HAFA program, H-A-F-A, which is a conventional program where we send the documents in ahead of time. You've got to know if you can get into these programs because there's real benefits to you if you can. So again, these are the red flags that I want you to know about in short sales. I want you to be very careful about what you're doing because a foreclosure is a killing thing for you. It is a, at least another 150 point drop on your credit. It may mean five to seven years before you can even get an FHA loan again on a home. And it may be a situation where you have tax implications and deficiency judgment implications that I've talked about in previous videos. Now, if you are in this situation in the Oklahoma City area, please contact me at joe at joepryor.com. That's J-O-E-P-R-Y-O-R, joe at joepryor.com. Or if you want to look over some immediate answers, see some of my blog posts about short sales uh, and foreclosure and being able to maybe take some surveys to find out what you qualify for, go to avoidforeclosureoklahoma.com. This is Joe Pryor with the virtual real estate team.com in Oklahoma City, where we deliver traditional real estate values with the speed of technology.